you beautiful people of the internet. What is going on? Welcome back to the channel. So we're here at the shop to get, wow, my voice just cracked. We're here at the shop to get a lot more work done on the blue STI. This should hopefully be the second to last video on this car before it starts up. We are going to build oil pressure in this video. We're unfortunately not going to get it started in this video, but we are going to get pretty damn close. So in the last video, you guys saw we got a lot of the small crap knocked out. We're here to keep crapping out, crapping out, knocking out the small crap. Grabbed a lot of the smaller things that I could think of that I would need, such as fittings, connectors. Uh, I found some oil sandwich plates so that way I can try to work up an oil cooler, some fittings, extra pressure sensors, some hoses wire, you oil filter, coolant lines to try to get this car as close as possible. The fabricator is going to be coming over here in about an hour to take our up pipe, go modify it, bring it back to us and hopefully get the turbo situation resolved so that way we can get this thing a lot closer to starting up because right now the biggest thing from keeping this car running is the fabrication aspect of moving that turbo. The intercooler pipe piping won't take me long to do, maybe a day or two, which will probably be this coming weekend or at the end of this week. We'll see what happens, but pumped. So we're going to start today off by wiring in our fans. So that way we can have some working fans on this car. So I did a little bit of hocus pocus magic stuff and I got the fans working. So the way I have them wired this time, last time I had them wired to two independent relays and it was kind of just annoying having all that excess wiring and they don't need to be ran on two independent relays. In the Haltech they have options so that way you can run multiple things off of a relay. So this relay controls both of our fans. I did some wizardry in the Haltech software and I got it so, well I just changed it so that way the fans kick on at uh, anything below 40 degrees off the coolant temp sensor. So I just set it below that. If I go to power it up, so you guys can hear the fans going kind of loud. We got one fan, two fans, both fans work. Now for the fan harness, I did integrate it into the engine harness this time, so that way it comes down. There's a breakaway connector. Oh, it's not a breakaway. There's just a connection here. It grounds out to the frame rail there, goes here. The grounds then run down to each fan, and then there's a 12 volt power supply that runs up to each one also. I need to secure those up, but I'll do that in a little bit, but sick. Fans work, that's an easy, actually, you know what, I'll probably just secure those up now so that way I don't gotta do it later because right now it dingle dangles down there. So let me get this wire secured up and then uh, we'll keep, oh, also, a pipe is out of here. The fabricator came and grabbed it. He's gonna be coming back and forth. I think he's gonna be working out of here too. So if he's cool filming, I'll film him doing some stuff. But essentially what we're gonna do is push the turbo back and set it down a little bit. Uh, probably cut these two studs off right there. So that way we can have our headlight in. Well, honestly, I want both headlights on my car and that's, that's not a compromise, so sick. Let's uh let's get that guy fixed up. A lot has happened in the last like couple hours that I have kind of not been filming but that's all right so our up pipe is almost done being modified so as you guys can see it looks insane I did not do this I wish I could say that I did but this was not me this was fab and dab he is a local fabricator who just moved in down a couple units for me a lot of people ask if this is like a storage unit place it's not this is these are all dedicated shops for people to do automotive things out of it's called garage plus but with this this drops the turbo down and back far enough to where we can have a headlight back in again so that's done I got the boost I found the boost controller wire also it was hidden underneath my back seat. So I got that wired up, that's in there. I'm about to run the vacuum line from the boost controller just to this general area. I'm waiting on one exhaust fitting to come in for that, but it is plugged in. We're about to just plumb that thing up. And then once we get through this last little stuff here, Melanie and I are gonna pop out all of the spark plugs, go to turn this thing oil, oil, go to turn this thing over to build oil pressure. Uh, once we have oil pressure built, then it's just building the intercooler piping the down pipe, and we should be pretty solid at that point to start driving this thing again. So 
I got a couple vacuum lines hooked up in the engine bay. I got all the spark plugs pulled out. Now I want to go to build oil pressure in this car and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Now, last time we went to build oil pressure for the first time, it was a little bit of a pain because the car didn't want to build oil pressure. I pulled apart that RCM pump and that's the main reason why I want to try to build oil pressure right now is because I don't want that Vaseline to dissolve when, I mean, it'll start to like seep down with heat, but especially with it being summertime, but when Vaseline and oil touch, they start to dissolve a little bit. So I have the oil feed line for the turbo pulled off right now. I've got it going into a little container. I'm gonna hop in the car, kick it over, and be the first time this engine turns over. Hopefully we get oil pressure off it too. Every time I put 12 volts or I touch this cable to that terminal, it should kick the starter over, which I'm gonna take this belt off because it's probably not doing us any good right now. We got oil? Yeah. Yo, hey, I'm gonna do it again. You ready? One, yeah. two, three. Go. We have the oil pressures. Oil pressure is built, which is awesome. Last time took so long to get oil pressure. Pack your oil pumps, you guys. Makes your life so much easier when it comes to getting oil pressure in these things. So now that we've got oil pressure, I'm gonna get all six spark plugs back in. I'll probably get the spark plugs leads put on on the driver's side, maybe the passenger side, I don't quite know yet. I'm gonna throw that one manifold gasket that I do have on on the driver's side. I will find one of these, okay? Some people sent me some links to a couple places, so I'm gonna find one somewhere, get it ordered tonight. But now that oil pressure is built, that's like a huge, that's also another huge relief off because last time we had to take the oil pan off, we were trying everything we could, taking the oil filter off, X, Y, and Z things to get oil pressure even going in this car. This time, dude, it like went right up. With one weird thing is, is I do have to jump the starter. So if you don't know what that means, actually after I pull the jumper off and I get these spark plugs back in, I'll just show you the little jumper harness that I made. You have to jump the starter so that way the car just kicks over and kicks over and kicks over. Otherwise, um, the, e the stock ECM tells it, hey, stop turning over after like three seconds and that's not enough time to be able to build oil pressure. So we got oil pressure, baby. We've got spark plugs, spark plug wires back in. I need to tuck some of those up, but they are all in, connected up through our coil packs. I got the starter re-engaged and re-hooked up. This was the little jumper I was talking about. So with these, you just hook that up to the 12 millimeter bolt side. This side, you're just gonna tap into the little slight slide pin. The one that I had on there broke as I was pulling it off. It doesn't matter, it was a temporary little power line, but it's whatevs. We got oil pressure, it's all hooked up. Everything's looking minty and beautiful. Now we just gotta wait for that up pipe to come back and then uh, I think we're gonna jet out for the night so I can grab some argon tomorrow when uh, the welding store opens up and then I think we'll start fabricating some intercooler piping. I wanna give a seriously huge shout out to Dustin over at Fab and Dab. If you guys are honestly, if you're looking for local fab work, hit him up. Hit up, I'll put his Instagram down in the description below. Dude does insane work for an affordable price and a quick turnaround. Like he got this done today with like materials that I provide him, provided him. He made all of his own pie cuts and whatnot. Let me show you, like we have our 7675 mounted up in the engine bay of the STI. We have a headlight in, so Oh, tomorrow I'm gonna start building intercooler piping and I'll do the down pipe later this week, but oh, dude, it fits so perfect. 7675 mounted up in the engine bay of the STI. We already had to remake intercooler piping anyways because I cut the ends off and whatnot, but dude, look at this insane, like he did so good. It's so fucking good on this. And, it, and he got it done in a day for us. Every time I've ever had to get an up pipe modified built or anything like that, it's been weeks. Weeks, I tell you. He got it done in a day. That's so impressive. So I am gonna have to trim down the frame rail right up there. That's not a big problem. A uh, big thing for me was being able to run the headlight again, and we actually don't have to relocate the ABS like I thought we would have to. So this is obviously aluminum. Uh, I'll get a steel one ordered, but the game plan here is to just run a 90 degree 
elbow straight off of that and then have it come up. I've got some pie cuts. I'll probably use a couple pie cuts to bring it up a little bit closer to have it come up and out of the fender a little bit more. But dude, we, we have it mounted. Big turbo PTE 7675. Six cylinder mounted, headlight in. That's what I'm fucking talking about right there, baby. Dude, fuck yeah. Next morning, I went and I got the big bottle of argon this time. I upgraded my argon. So we are going to start building all of the intercooler piping. Well, the intercooler piping we can build now for the blue STI or for blue. I have more material coming tomorrow from Ace Race, but we're gonna get started on this just because I wanna start working through the intercooler piping to get it done with. But before we jump on that, I do wanna give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor, our friends over at Tecron. You guys know we've been working with Tecron for a very long time now. And with Blue about to come back to life, we still have some old E85 in this car that I need to drain out. It is on my checklist to do. And now when we go to drain that out, we are going to have to recalibrate the fuel system. And when we go to do that, we are going to toss in some of this Tecron complete fuel system cleaner. I'm a little worried about some basic corrosion on the fuel pumps. Um, this should help clean off any of that old residue that's in there. It should help push out any deposits. It should help clean up my fuel level sensor too if it's a little bit sticky from sitting in there of all that E85 that has kind of like gunked up in the fuel tank. Now, if you drive an older car or if you drive a car that's just maybe a daily driver that you don't really modify at all, Tecron's Complete Fuel System Cleaner does a fantastic job at restoring some of those lost miles per gallon from a gunked up and old dirty fuel system. In addition to that, it could restore some of those lost horsepowers that you may have had in the past that are kind of gone now. Huge shout out to our friends over at Tecron. There will be more info on the Complete Fuel System Cleaner down in the video description. And with that, Tecron is also doing their voting on their Drive It Forward contest, which two finalists are both Subaru enthusiasts. So if you guys want, there will be a link down there also to go vote for them. Go show them some love. Go help our boys win 500 bucks, get featured on Tecron, and help share their stories. So let's start mocking up some intercooler piping. I've got the first piece of intercooler piping made up from the throttle body going to the intercooler. Now, before I show you these welds, keep in mind, I'm a hobbyist welder. I am not a professional welder. I learn, I have learned welding by just doing it. I can do steel way better than aluminum, but I can at least weld aluminum. When it comes to, we're about to final weld this piece that I have now. When we go to final weld this, it is aluminum, so I need to keep in mind that I need to take breaks because I need to let the aluminum cool down, otherwise it can get too hot. And then if I hit it with the welder, uh, it can just melt right through there. So I don't want to do that. I also made the mistake of, and don't do this, don't leave stainless steel filler rod on your table when you're welding aluminum and you just grab a piece. I tried to weld steel to aluminum and it, just, it obviously did not work for multiple reasons. This is kind of what I've made up so far. Our IAT sensor can go right about, probably have it go there in that pipe, or I could probably have it go out one more. I might have it go out now because it's got to go out to there. So maybe I will, I don't know. I'll put it somewhere over here. Uh, we have a Vangent clamp here or an HD clamp. So this is just going to route around. That's the tightest radius that I could get. I don't know how to cut pie cuts. I don't have a bandsaw, so I just buy pre-cut pie cuts. You can judge me if you want. So you guys can see it just kind of comes out, wraps around. That's the tightest I could get it. This is what we had before. And you know, it worked. It got the job done. These are my old aluminum welds that are massive. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and tell you my new welds are crazy better, but they are a little more flush. I think it looks pretty good for my level of welding or my skill of welding. This is like the fifth piece of aluminum pipe I think I've actually welded up. So, so let's pull this guy. Oh, and I got uh, this HD clamp just kind of welded up so that way our intercooler piping can go up under the headlight. It'll come up through that opening there, wrap up and around, and then meet up with that guy. And then there's gonna be one HD clamp in the middle. So that way the intercooler piping is a two-piece design. So that way it is serviceable. Sweet! I like that. So let's go ahead and pull this guy off. I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy welded up so that way this piece is at least done. I don't have my Dremel here with me because I have it at the house because I was porting out the rotary. So uh, I can't do the IAT sensor today. That's all right though, but let's get this guy welded up at least. So 
feel like I've got the hardest piece of the intercooler piping done with, which is the piece coming off of the throttle body. Now I wanna reiterate this again, I'm not a professional welder, I'm not a professional fabricator. I have learned to weld and fabricate by just doing things and kind of figuring it out as we go, if that makes sense. So don't judge it, you can judge it, but just don't, don't judge it too hard, okay? I feel like it's, I feel like it's the best aluminum I've done. Like I said, I can do stainless steel like very confidently. Aluminum's a different animal. Also keep in mind, this is not a show car, um, but I'm, like, I'm happy with it. I feel like that's way better than we had before. So it comes out, does like a nice little bend here. Like I said, the IAT sensor will go down here. We'll get a, I need to order some three and a half straight and then we can have that come down to about here where we'll put a V-band, actually we'll probably bring it here, do a V-band clamp there. And then it'll go down to this piece of intercooler piping, which needs to kind of go up like that. I might cut the tacks on this and shorten it a little bit, but dude, like I'm like, super stoked with that like i said i just buy all the pie cuts pre-cut because i don't I, I just don't have the ability to cut pie cuts at least not with my experience but like with this dude i'm like super pumped with that the old one used to hit this core support so now do there's actually like room there's actually room in here so that way it and just to give like a little bit of clarity again this was the old one which went just like kind of it just came out really far new one old one new one old one new one i'm gonna paint all the intercooler piping to match the manifold also so old one new one now we're still gonna have to do this intercooler piping on this side this is an old piece of three inch 90 that i have but i think i actually might use that to come down and then do i don't know how i'm gonna connect that i'll figure that out on a different day i'm not worried about that right this second but that's Pre, that's a close guesstimate of what we're gonna do there. That fits pretty nicely. Also, while I was letting that guy cool down because that thing was hot, I got the last of the boost controller fittings on, that little breather fitting there. So the boost controller is wired in. It's got all its fittings on. I just need to run those to their perspective homes, which is going to be the up pipe uh, where the wastegates live and then the turbo, and that should be it. Oil wires are in. This thing is almost ready to start back up. I cannot wait. There's really two things keeping me from actually starting it up. Um, that is the downpipe because I need my O2 sensor in here for the downpipe to be able to figure out what the hell's going on uh, and the IAT sensor so that way I can make adjustments but and then it, oh and ejectors but that's it dude that's it there's three things like actually keeping the car from running so I can't do anything else on the intercooler piping until my delivery comes in which I think it comes in either today or tomorrow no it comes in today because I ordered it last night so it'll be here tomorrow uh, so we can keep going on that I did get in the last of the coolant lines that I need to finish hooking up the expansion tank so I'm gonna get that last line on it goes from the bottom of the expansion tank over to the coolant crossover right down here so let me get that guy on let me check the engine bay for any other smaller things i can just knock out right now Yeah, Jim Bob. So upper expansion tank release line and release line done on both of those. I just need to run those over to that. I just need to order some hose for it. Turbo blanket, I toss that back on. I actually got the clamps and whatnot in here to be able to figure this guy out the rest of the way. Like I said, I'm gonna order some three and a half inch tubing on that. I just prefer these HD clamps now for like a big power build like this. Uh, some people, I posted up the turbo location in the community tab yesterday and some people were concerned with, is the headlight gonna melt? Uh, my favorite one was the headlight connector is gonna go for a wild ride, yeah, you right. But no, there's already thermal barrier on the, you can't really see it down there. I've got thermal barrier already on the back of the headlight from last time. This guy, I will probably relocate that down just cause it's kind of an obstruction and it looks kind of bad. The other big thing is we didn't have to relocate ABS like I thought we would which is gonna be awesome. Now I am gonna to have to pull all the exhaust back off, bead blast it, and then re it from this new round of fabrication. But dude, this thing looks so freaking, it's coming together and it looks so freaking good. I'm hoping to have this running in the next, like I said, two or three videos maximum because we are, dude, we're like right there. All that's left is a couple of fabrication stuff, which I feel like this was gonna be the hardest part of this intercooler piping. So I'm pretty pretty pumped with how it came out, to be honest. Uh, the Cerakoting is gonna take a couple of days to cure. So in the next video, we're gonna come and start on the downpipe. The material shows up for that. I wanna get all of the exhaust done with. So that way we can Cerakote it because the Cerakote has to sit for a couple of days before it can be used. And then the other thing I need to fabricate, which is gonna suck, is the turbo support mount. So the old one has this, uh, this bracket that bolts up to the turbo and I got a brand new one of these to be able to weld off of. And it just uses some one inch thick steel bar this is rod it's hollow we need to make a new one of these so that way we can support the turbo so that way it doesn't break the exhaust but now that i'm stuck waiting on raw material to come in for 
the STI, we're gonna go back to the house. I think I got some cool stuff for the RX-7 there that may have been delivered today that I wanna show you guys. And I'm gonna have to take a quick break from Blue over the next couple of days. The new engine for the WRX gets dropped off tomorrow, so I need to get that car running so I can go trade it in so we can go get our new VB WRX to match Blue. We're gonna have two Blues. Except one blue is going to be a fucking monster and the other one's just going to be a cute little bolt-on daily driver. Um, so, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. So, for all of my RX-7 nerds, I didn't want to leave you guys out. Actually, I just wanted to give an RX-7 update if we're just being honest. And a Matt update. Hold on. People have been asking about you. No way. People have been saying, where's Matt? Where's my Matt videos? Matt I'm right with, here. Matt with his collection of Milwaukee. This is what's going on with me. What do I do about this, guys? I need this working. And looking good. Why do I keep ripping more parts off the house and then making it worse? You're doing great, man. So with the RX-7, I have not forgotten about this car. I have the rotors and all the engine rebuild stuff in the house. But for now, I did want to give you guys an update on like what I've been like doing. So I'm stockpiling a lot of parts for it. I uh, got like a brand new OEM oil pan, oil pickup wall bureau fuel pumps, uh, clutch, control arms, flywheel, all that stuff back there. I also got a new fuel system for the car. So we have a radium fuel pump hanger with fuel filter thingy. We got two turbo smart waste gates. So over here we have the single turbo kit. So I got the Turblone single turbo kit for this 13B. Uh, it came with downpipe, all the fittings and whatnot the exhaust manifold, the dump tubes, and then a big Bob Wagner for the car. This is the SXE 600, I believe, or something along those lines. So the RX-7 stuff's gonna be coming up. I just wanna get the blue STI kind of wrapped up, get the WRX wrapped up, which the engine, like I said, the engine shows up tomorrow for this car. So this thing should be running and driving probably by Thursday. So that way we can get it out of here and go get our new VB WRX. Also, I forgot, I also got some smaller little things for the RX-7, like new plastic headlight covers and whatnot because mine are broken at literally all the mounting tabs. So RX-7 stuff is gonna be coming up. Uh, VB WRX stuff's gonna be coming up. And then we got blue that should hopefully be wrapping up here in the next couple of videos. But that is all I've got for you guys on this one. So if you like the video, you know what to do, go to hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, cyan, whatever color it turns for you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you wanna be one of these corners, no idea, no idea which one I'll put it in quite yet, but with that, catch you guys in the next one. So peace out, homies.